found my girlfriend was cheating on me with a close friend, so I had him arrested and ghosted her. Backstory, incoming sadness, my wife Rachel and I grew up in a largish town of close to 30,000 people. We knew each other at an early age, roughly 6 or 7, can't specifically remember. We were practically inseparable. At 16, we started dating each other. When we turned 18, we moved away for work in a city just a few hours drive away. By 20, we were married and had bought our first house. At 22, we discovered that she was pregnant with a boy. It was then disaster struck about five weeks before she was due to go on maternity leave, a large shelving unit collapsed and crushed her. I was told that both her and our child were deleted instantly. Two of her colleagues had also been injured in the accident, one left paralyzed, the other losing his leg after it had to be amputated. The company she was working for, had in a cost-cutting measure, decided to continue using old shelving that had been written off as unsafe instead of replacing it. I still haven't quite forgiven those executives and management personnel that made that decision, because they cut short the love of my life as well as deleting our unborn child. It wasn't long after I was told I had a choice on how to proceed with what her company called compensation, but I called it blood money. They wanted to settle out of court to avoid a lawsuit. I, on the other hand, was out for their blood. Just to clarify here, this is not the revenge, this is still backstory. Fortunately, due to the coverage that it got, and involving several politicians, the case was settled quickly in court, roughly three years, in which the payout for all parties was close to ten times the amount that they had initially offered. A lot of fines were given to them for breaches on work, health and safety, executives were sacked, others were jailed, etc. A story for another time maybe, when I feel comfortable sharing. In this time, I was still working my job in telecommunications. My mother, bless her soul, had moved in while all this was happening to help me. I think I would have fallen apart if she hadn't been as involved as she was. It was around this time, I was offered a promotion, but it involved a lot of travel around the state. I made a request to have an office in my hometown's branch, as I wanted to not only take care of businesses in the state, but in my hometown also as there was no business representative located there to which they agreed. After a few months, we settled into a routine of one to two weeks in the city office, one week in my hometown and one to two weeks visiting the rest of the state. After a year, I decided to buy a house in my hometown, so I wasn't having to stay at my parents' place every week or so that I was home and that I could come and go as I pleased. This is important for later in the story. It is about four years later that our story begins. Sorry if the backstory was a bit long, I had just returned from one of my trips on Friday, and was checking in some stuff at my office when Harry, the branch's managing director, walked in. We had grown up together also, but had gone to different schools but since coming back had developed a very close friendship. He asked how things were, and then asked me if I wanted to come to a house party that he was having that evening. Short notice and all, but I said yes. I felt like a few drinks with friends were in order. It was there that Harry introduced me to Catherine. She was a new hire at the branch where my hometown's office was located and was getting to know everyone being new in town. We hit it off immediately. As much of a cliche as it sounds, it was almost as if Rachel was in front of me, instead of Catherine. I won't bore you too much with the details, but after two years of dating, we decided to take the next step and she moved into my hometown's house. Everything up to this point had been going really well. Catherine and my parents got along and Rachel's parents also approved and were happy that someone could make me just as happy as Rachel had done. All was going well for close to a year when things began to change. Skype sessions were cut short suddenly, neighbors would tell me about how a car, described to me like it was Harry's, was always seen parked in the back alley near my house whenever I was away, some clothes that weren't mine were in my wardrobe. All signs pointed to her cheating, but she said that nothing was happening. She said that Harry would come over occasionally to discuss business, etc., but never stayed the night. I chalked it up to me being paranoid and continued on as if nothing was wrong, but there was always this feeling that something wasn't right. 
It was close to six months after that I discovered that she had been lying to me. I had just finished closing a rather large contract with a new company and negotiations had wrapped up earlier than I had anticipated. So instead of sticking around for the next few days, I decided to pay for an early flight home and surprise everyone. Fast forward a few hours and I drive into my hometown and down the alley behind my house so that I could get into the house without being seen and surprise Catherine. Some part of me was curious however as to whether this mystery car was there. Sure enough, there was a car that was blocking the back entrance gate. I was confused for a moment wondering if it had just been a neglectful neighbor parking only to realize that it was indeed Harry's car. If it hadn't been for the high hedge line that I had put in a few years back for privacy, I may have well driven past my own place. Pulling up behind his car, I got out and thought it was strange that he was there so late. As she claimed that he always had left by now. As I approached the back of the house I saw something that stomach drop. In my kitchen, Catherine and Harry were going at it hammer and tong. I froze. Time stopped. There was my close friend, having a romance on my kitchen bench with my girlfriend. I didn't know what to do. So many questions were running through my head. Was this real or was I dreaming? Why were they having romance in my house? Feeling defeated, I turned and left without them seeing me. I sat in my car for what felt like an eternity. I was crying. Hard. But the sadness quickly turned into anger. The same kind of anger I felt towards those that were responsible for Rachel's peaceful deletion. I wanted to hurt them. Badly. As a pacifist, I don't believe in violence. It was then I knew I was going to punish them and destroy their lives. And what better time to start than now? I moved my car back up the alley, far enough away from my driveway that I could still see Harry's car, and then walked back to the gate where I could see into the house, and called her phone. They were still going for it when it rang. They both looked at the caller ID and did a double take when my name came up. I could see that she was considering answering it and they let it ring out. After a few moments they were back into it again and I dialed once again. This time she did answered. As she was answering I hung up and made my way back to my car. As soon as I did, she called me back. She asked why I was calling as late as I was, and I told her that I was about 10 minutes from home and didn't want to scare her coming in. She, obviously, was shocked and acted happy that I was coming and the call ended very quickly after she said she was going to get up and get changed into something. I said bye and hung up. A few moments later, Harry came peeling through the gate and still half naked, jumped into his car took off like a bat out of hell. I smiled a little, knowing the fear that both of them would be feeling from being so close to being caught. I waited a few moments before turning my car into the same place Harry had been moments earlier. The night was fairly uneventful afterwards and it wasn't until after she was asleep, that I got up and went to my office down the hall. I couldn't sleep. I needed to plan. And plan I did. The revenge my mother always taught me to be a pacifist and to allow cosmic karma to take its course. But on this occasion, I decided that karma could use a helping hand. I decided to punish them separately but destroy both of them. I knew that Harry had a medication habit. Nothing major, but he kept it very private. I only knew about it accidentally after seeing some coke and green stuff left out in his place but pretended I hadn't seen it when he had made attempts to cover it up. I began calling some of my more unsavory clientele and made a few discreet inquiries into obtaining some samples that they were willing to part with. A few days later, I had a decent enough stash for my plan to work. About a month later, I had friends, including Harry around for a barbecue night. After making sure that I sufficiently liquored up Harry, I told him to stay the night and sleep it off. In the early hours of that morning, I took the medication, and an assortment of my personal belongings, and placed them at various places around his car, with the biggest stash in his tire well. Confident that he wouldn't find them over the few months as the rest of my plan took effect, I locked the car up and went inside to sleep. I also placed some more medication and personal items in his house after driving him home because he was still too silly to drive. 
A few days later, I staged a break-in, by smashing the back pane of my back door into my kitchen and leaving it open before heading back to the city for a flight. I had several messages the moment I landed. One from my clearly panicked mum, who had found the back door smashed open and had called the police, one from Catherine in tears, and one from the local police asking me to call. After returning all the calls, I informed the police I was away on business, and that I would be back the following week to talk with them. While away, I got Catherine to stay with my parents until after I got back, and asked my dad to organize one of the local security companies to install cameras and an alarm system after getting the go-ahead from the police as to not ruin the scene of the crime. After getting home, I did the usual my god I can't believe this has happened and why would anyone do this? routine. After doing a thorough check of everywhere, finding that the items I had taken were missing and filing a police report, I had the security company's rep talk Catherine and I through how the cameras and alarm system worked. Then came the question I had been waiting for. The question of what happens if we are doing some business and don't want it recorded. She acted a bit shy asking this question. But I knew exactly the reason she was asking. He assured us that this was a question he got asked a lot, and we were shown on the home computer, if we wanted to be doing things without it being recorded, how to stop the recording for certain cameras, so that we could protect her modesty. As I was walking him out, I asked him if cameras were turned off, could a notification be sent out, just as a security precaution. He came back in and helped me through how to set up email notifications and left shortly after. Fantastic. All I had to do was wait. At this stage, I approached r slash legal advice for some help in relation to couples law in my country. I needed to make sure that my upcoming plan could legally be done and that I would not be forced to pay out any money or equity to Catherine as I didn't know if we were classified as a de facto couple or not. Being the sole benefactor of Rachel's estate, I didn't want to be left with any nasty surprises where Catherine could take any of the estate away from me. Shout out to those guys and gals there as they helped me get in contact with a great lawyer who assured me, due to the fact that although we had been dating for close to four years, we had not been living together long enough to be classified as de facto, and because I was paying all the utilities on the property that she was living in and didn't pay rent, showed that she had no legal standing to make a financial claim against me. Just to be sure though, he drew up what I felt was a pretty ironclad document just in case there was any legal trouble. The following week, my work had approached me, and offered me a promotion to move back to the city and run the team that I was a part of, meaning I wouldn't need to travel as often and be in the one location and due to the success of being located in my hometown, that they were considering having three to five representatives spend one to two weeks in the Lahaja surrounding towns including my hometown as a part of my team. I said yes, and began the process of beginning my transfer, which would take about six weeks. Perfect. More than enough time to gather all my evidence. Upon getting back to my hometown the following week, I began to start in motion the rest of my plan. I asked Harry to approve one week's worth of vacation for Catherine for two weeks' time. I wanted to send her and a friend or two away on a retreat before I made the biggest decision of my life for a second time. He jumped up and gave me a huge hug, congratulating me on being prepared to take the leap again. I hugged him back tight, but not the way I think he imagined it at the time. He agreed and blocked out the week for me. I asked him not to say anything to anyone, as I wanted to make it as big a surprise as I could. I knew, that it would spread like wildfire around the office regardless, but that was my plan. That night, I told Catherine that I had booked her and two friends to go to a tropical spa resort, all expenses paid for a week. No questions asked, pick two friends, and come back to the biggest surprise of her life. She screamed like a kid who had just been told that all the candy in the shop was hers to have. I then told her that the following week, I was going to spend it in the city, preparing for a large client who was one of my biggest accounts and needed some people in my team to help before flying out the following week and I wouldn't be home until the Monday that she was leaving, so I wouldn't be able to see her, which seemed to disappoint her, but I told her it would be worth it when she returned. 
What I failed to tell her, was that I had decided to take two weeks vacation on the other side of the country, mentally preparing myself for the poop storm that was about to erupt the moment she stepped foot on the plane as well as enjoying my first stage of freedom. On Sunday two weeks later, I flew back and began driving home. Once getting there I done a quick pass by my house and sure enough, Harry's car was there. Like the first night I had caught them, I parked a little ways back, and checked the cameras. Asleep, in my bed. No surprise honestly as I had recorded them constantly do this over the two weeks I had been away. I then made my first call to the police blocking my caller ID. I told them that I was one of my neighbors and saw someone hanging around in their car in the alley behind my house and occasionally passing something through windows to passing cars while also looking into my yard and I was concerned that they were dealing medication and or going to break into someone's property. I gave them his license plate and description. They said they would have someone there in a few minutes so I thanked them and hung up. I then called Catherine and told her I was about 10 minutes from home, and that I knew she was flying out tomorrow, but desperately wanted to surprise her. Looking back at the footage now, I laugh at the commotion that I am surprised I didn't hear. In a few short seconds, Harry was half-dressed and flying out the back door to his car. At that point, I couldn't have asked for a more perfect scene. As Harry was peeling away, one of the police cars rounded the corner behind me, saw Harry driving away fast, and gave chase. After pulling in, greeting an excited Catherine, and doing all the couple things, she fell asleep again. I, on the other hand, couldn't sleep a wink. The next day, her and her friends were bundled into a car. After they drove away, I had to wait a few hours, but I began to execute my plan. I called my friend who was a removalist, and apologized for the late notice but needed my place packed and moved on Friday. After agreeing on a time I told him that he would need to take certain boxes to a storage facility, which he said wasn't an issue. Then I began packing Catherine's belongings. Later that day, I got a call from the police for me to come and identify some property that they had apprehended from a suspect the previous night that fit the description of property I had reported stolen. I grinned to myself, happy that my plan for Harry had grown to fruition and replied that I would be there shortly to collect it. Of course, when I got there, some of the items were still unaccounted for, due to the fact that they must have still been in his house and they hadn't searched there yet. By this stage, the town was buzzing with news. Events in my hometown don't stay secret for long. Harry was disgraced and promptly fired for his possession of medication and stolen property, and our respective bosses on behalf of the company had extended a formal apology towards me during the week. That night I went to my parents' house and told both mine and Rachel's parents what had happened, omitting certain details, and that I was moving back to the city after being promoted, but Catherine wouldn't be a part of it. They were pretty upset initially that I hadn't let them know what was going on, but were happy that I was handling everything maturely and hadn't sunk to their level, thought they didn't agree with ghosting Catherine. But after some drinks, laughs and tears, I went home. On Friday afternoon, after a busy week of organizing cleaners for the following week, the real estate to put my house on the rental market, and various other tasks at my hometown's office, I packed some things into my car, and drove to my parents' place and said goodbye before the drive. Before leaving, I went to Becky's house. Becky had been one of Rachel's closest friends growing up. She was the only other person who knew that knew what was happening, minus the details about Harry. Without her help, I wouldn't have been able to organize everything as quickly as I had. I gave Becky a large manila folder with my gathered evidence of her cheating, as well as the letter and a few other legal documents from my attorney stating that she was ordered not to contact me, and the details of how to access her belongings located at the storage unit I had rented out. After a quick goodbye, I left and drove back to the city. On Sunday, I woke up to several missed calls, voice messages and text messages. Turns out, Catherine had come home early after being alerted to something being afoot in town, only to find an empty house and a for rent sign out the front. Freaking out, she had gone to my parents, 
who closed the door on her the moment that they answered, forcing her to call everyone until she managed to somehow be contacted by Becky and told that she had a package for her. I was told that she didn't take too well to that, as I fully well knew at that point from the numerous angry texts and voice messages from her accusing me of setting up Harry, of being deceitful, etc. I was worried that she might show up at my front door, but nothing ever happened. Five weeks later after leaving and been promoted, I write this out for you dear reader. Granted it's long, and it took a few rewrites to shorten it down from my initial 14 pages, double what this story is now but I feel that most of what I said was important enough for the story. Too long didn't read, after my pregnant wife was deleted in a workplace accident, I moved to back to my hometown and connected with a woman who after moving in with me, cheated on me with a close friend. I set him up to take the fall for medication possession and after sending her away on a spa retreat, rented out my house and left town for a promotion while exposing her as a cheater. Hey guys, please like comment, and subscribe. It would really help me out, thanks. God. Damn. Slow clap. I smell a couple felonies in here. At least some serious misdemeanors. I'm afraid this reads too much like a Hollywood movie script. Nobody in their right mind would post to Reddit about having committed multiple serious crimes within the last few weeks slash months. Especially someone who's bright enough to design, plan and execute such a textbook revenge sequence. Jeremy Renner would be a good pick to play the lead role in this movie. Good story, but I still don't think you should stage a crime. And the fact that you admitted to it on the internet makes it even dumber. Either the story is BS or you like living on the edge. Bravo. A revenge on the scale of Monte Cristo. Having someone arrested for false charges isn't in bounds here.